What up my freaks, Rowanus Insight here with part uh, 12 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, a nice variety of uh, battles, though I suppose uh, the, pretty much every single episode in this campaign has had such a nice variety, uh, saw us, or was culminating, or culminated rather, in the fall of Malice once again. Hagrief has, what, one, two, three, four, or possibly five settlements remaining that'll be possibly just enough time for malice to recover though possibly not it'll depend on how quickly we can reach the uh, final settlement uh, that they have anyway in terms of what we got to do this time we spread out to destroy malice once and for all and possibly attack mr daniel here i still haven't just fully decided on that and you guys were pretty chaos divided about it as the uh, some of you said just kill him some of you said try to ally him and well we'll just have to play it by ear when we approach and see what the likelihood of vassalizing him is nonetheless they serve Archeon or they die that is still going to be the idea in this campaign before we get started looks like once again we did manage to reach the engagement threshold though ooh, the likes just barely so just barely inching by uh Nonetheless, it'll be an hour-long episode, and the offer does stand for at least two more episodes until we lower the threshold. For now, 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Anyway, let's get started. Archeon, you are going to declare war on the Legion of Asgore, meaning we're going to ask Imric to do so, and then we'll ask the Clan Rictus to join war against Imric, etc., etc. I mean, it's free money. Why wouldn't we? I suppose a few of our allies might not appreciate us doing that, but, uh, well, we don't care. Uh, summoning stance for you, and attack the Darkhold. Actually, don't know whether doing summoning stance before attacking actually helps us in any way. Huh. Which, let me just check here. So, March stance does nothing. And this just gives us local corruption and fires and... I don't know, just, just do it, doesn't matter. And yeah, okay, auto resolve will badly hurt immune and of misery here, but that's okay. Not a huge deal because we heal up quite nicely. Ooh, we can actually sack the place. And hey, the Knights of Immolation, we really gotta get a Zinchin army up and running. I mean, village soon, but uh, a separate Zinchin army. Get a lord an opportunity to earn uh, his name and make his legend, like Gulator and Kukar have been doing throughout the campaign. Also, I uh, there was an idea floated in the comments that we perhaps could get a hero of every type of... Uh, of uh, every type of god follower in Archeon's army, and then use at least one of the... Oh, you know what I should do while we're at it? Uh, eh, maybe next turn. Uh, use one of the heroes and one of the knights and dedicate them to each god. Still have some undivided knights, but so there's a coterie for every single hero type, which may not be the worst idea in the world and would allow us to combine their effects to some degree. You guys let me know what you think about that, though it will make Archeon's army very hero and single entity unit heavy, as in he'll have five heroes and then he himself sixth. Though it'll still leave room for plenty of knights, it'll have relatively little or comparatively little in the way of Chaos Warriors, as we'd most likely just have to keep it to these five or possibly six depending on if we keep the hell cannon or not and i'm not sure we will i'm not sure arcan needs it to be frank with all of the uh, knights that he has in his army anyway azazel we're gonna head you over to blood mountain because they don't want the crag to steal it as it does have iron there and kolek you're going northward to the baleful hills and auto resolve that real quick, though I think the auto resolve doesn't dislike your army nearly as much as it dislikes those giants. Yeah, it's not so bad. It doesn't like the doggos, but that's fine. Occupy. And come on, do we keep the pasture? No, we didn't keep the pasture. Oh well. It would have been nice, but you can't have it all. Next up, Kolek. Actually, speaking of you, I did want to try to get to you, sir. A new hero, an exalted hero of Nurgle to be specific. It doesn't really matter which one we pick because they'll be path to glory immediately. And, ooh, I just screwed up again, didn't I? Well, actually, no, they started level 5, so we will have lost some levels, but what I should have done was this, and distinguished champions. Well, next one, next one. For now, 
I guess here's what we'll do. This will test out, we'll pop you into Path of Glory immediately, and if it's good, great, and if it's not, we'll delete you and then try, try again. Choose Path to Nurgle. And what do we have here? Eldritch Aura is not bad, this missile resistance and spell resistance to some degree. I'm sure Kolek can appreciate Ward save out of Survivor is fine, but it's really hard to get because you have to lose a battle on purpose, and usually I'm too lazy to do that, as in start a battle and then walk away essentially walk off field chaos assassin is pretty much useless though uh you did get to keep unearthly reflexes which ain't bad hmm i don't know i'll think about it is it worth just the eldritch aura basically or do we try another one you know what once we have additional capacity we can try another one if it's a better one then we can delete this guy something along those lines but for now you can head out to kolek next uh kuhar I guess this will be next turn, eh? It will be time to head to Nangao. Your army is maxed out. We still can't coordinate everybody, though. This unit of Chaos Trolls can become a unit of Armored Chaos Trolls, which are significantly better. And there we go. Yeah, that'll be helpful for breaking down gates and all that sort of stuff. And I think we could do the same thing with Colex armor, at least with one of the Chaos Trolls. I'm most likely still going to transfer these guys out, but uh, it'll be later. Oh, they only have to be rank 3? Alright, double up on the armored Chaos Trolls then. And they're quite nice. If Colex buffed them a little bit more than just the missile resistance, I would probably care about them more. But I don't think he does, and he doesn't reduce their upkeep in any way or anything like that. But I'll still think about it. At the same time, a little bit of a variety for his army isn't the worst thing in the world either. And they are more tanky than the Dragon Ogres are. Anyway, with that, we're ready to end the turn once more. Skip, 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 skip. Uh, we probably could check buildings. We got three turns left to Blood and Toil. And just in case... Ooh, you know what I also wanted to check? There were a few rather negative public order places. Haunted Forest is in a bad way. Let's switch you to this one. Foster Cults, because we need the Vampiric Corruption to go away. Provincial Instability will go down next turn. Devastation will go down once you're repaired, but I'm not wasting 338 on this right now because these guys might come for it, and I don't like that. Uh, would be a waste then. Otherwise, let's just double check if there's anything else that we want to build with the remnants of blood and toil on the last few turns of it. Nothing crazy. I don't see any favor locations that we would need to build. And some of the newly acquired places don't need to be built either. In the sense that there's a decent likelihood that they'll be reconquered by another army here. We should also probably get another army on the field to grab Shenmu and then head southward to Temple of the Elemental Winds, but I think we'll wait a turn or two, and just in case we need to spend all our money on buildings. Alright, Zatan, you sir, want military access? No, we're going to be attacking you, so there isn't much point to that. Hmm... I mean, I suppose we could grab Village and then make Village kill him, which would be nice, considering he's been fighting Village all this time. And this would keep Village out of Cathay as well. Uh, Wild Hunt begins, outpost construction, great for outpost. Ooh, hello, carry out a successful assassination for a potion of healing. It's always nice to have a potion of healing, but we have no hero nearby. We could summon a sorcerer out of this Chaos Shrine, which... Probably is what we're going to do. You can act as an assassin, funnily enough, so we'll head you southward. But I ain't wasting money on redoing you. Although, at the same time... Mm, he's gonna cost us 200 per turn, which is more than redoing the one if we delete him anyway. I'll think about it. Uh, either way, you, sir. Ukar, you will besiege Nangao and Kivald Painbringer. You're gonna follow along in a second. Alright, build some siege equipment. And they might sally out as well, which we'll have to uh, watch out for. But considering Kukar's latest exploits, I'm pretty confident in his ability. Anyway, you can have magic as weakness, I don't really care about the... Wait, you know what, this is 5 attack. For one point, I think we'll take that, and then we'll uh, we'll go from magic as weakness right after. Uh, Archeon, you're ready to move again and to heal while well, you do so. March stance all the way down here and move towards Bitter Bay. Azazel, 
You've got places to be and you cannot reach it, so go to raiding. Alright, looks like a couple of turns are going to be just moving around effectively. What about you? Nope, can't reach it either. Alright, fair enough. Hi, right, it'll be a little bit of money and a little bit of healing via... Uh, via raiding slash replenishment in enemy territory. Though the replenishment is significantly reduced in enemy territory. Mind you. Kolek, can you... Wow, nobody can reach anything this turn. Wait. Nah, you still can't. Alright, so close to the Bridge of Heaven and yet so far. There's a lesson to be taken from that. But I don't know what it is. Anyway, Hudika, you have to head towards Zazel and level yourself up in order to get to where you need to, which is Slaneshi Path to Glory, and I believe that's it. Alrighty. Uh, two more turns left of Blood and Toil, huh? Alright, well, I guess I don't want to check the buildings again because I don't feel like it, so we're just going to end the turn. We're going to see if these guys sally out, and if they don't, we'll attack next turn. So either way, we fight now. Oh, and I guess, okay, yeah, they'll say, oh, Meow Ying has returned. Well, that ain't great. Or is it great? You know what? From a coordinate perspective, that is great. So, uh, we need to cast her down one more time and cast her down. Oh, we shall. A Pyrrhic victory, medium casualties. Meow Ying, as usual, is going to be something of a problem. And our doggos are hurt, so we'll have to be careful about getting them into combat. Uh, that sees them take too much damage. But anyway, this army has earned its coronate stripes. We just need to make sure that we uh, get that branding iron unlocked as soon as possible. Anyway, away we go. Alright, that's it? Alright, apparently that's it. Alright, well, here we go. Meow Ying's last stand against Kuhar's Blood Hunt. Uh, she does have a pretty decent stack with the Garrison of Nangao here, two of the uh, Sky Lanterns and the Empress Chrome, and neither of which we can really touch uh, due to the relative lack of anti-air, and the anti-air we have being, generally speaking, very busy. Now, our army is damaged, so we're going to have to approach this here Carefully, we've deployed four damaged units over on this flank with the three of the uh, doggos hidden and the damaged marauders, most damaged marauders, about to be hidden as well. We're going to wait until we engage and then send those out to loop around the enemy and hit the, uh, uh, hit the back line. We... And the Skull Cannon currently targeting the enemy Jade Lancers as they've proven fairly vulnerable to the uh, Skull Cannon fire, so we're certainly going to take advantage of that. And both of our units of Marauder Horsemen are deployed on this side, annoying another unit of Jade Lancers to the point that we try to drag them back. The idea is to drag them around here where the two units of the uh, Duggos, the Hounds of the Blood Hunt, and the Bloody Fangs of Corn hit them and hopefully destroy them, while the more fragile horsemen that just continue to annoy. Let's see if the cell works out, get a few more volleys in from that skull cannon of ours, or those skull cannons. <laughs> Missing the jade lancers a little bit, uh, but uh, taking out a few of those jade warriors, so I'm sure that all works fine. And there we go. There we go. Every few shots uh, knocks out a fairly decent amount of the units, and ooh, smart move by Meow Ying, activating Storm of Shadows on the Skull Cannon in particular, reducing its speed and range, and thereby its effectiveness, uh, due to it needing to get into combat. Fortunately, it can move while firing, and when it does fire, it is certainly still going to be fairly effective. Gonna get a few more volleys off, and then reposition back up, and not lose these things to ranged fire. Alrighty, a few more javelins a shot at the enemy as we move away. Some marauders moving in to distract the enemy, and here come the hounds. And going to attack both these jade lancers at once, and continue uh, hitting them with javelins from the back with at least one of our units of... Uh, uh, of Marauder Horsemen. The rest of the enemy army is starting to move in and to engage, and we're going to countercharge them a little bit. Some Jade Lancers have charged foolishly into the Corn's Chosen. Should have chosen to uh, uh, charge Marauders instead, as this is not going to go well for you. 
And in fact, it looks like they're going to book it on out of there rather than fight the, uh, the dual axe chaos warriors, which is appropriate. Meow Ying has transformed and we've been waiting in the back with a couple of units in reserve, specifically the Blood Angels, uh, Halberd Ears, and the Exalted Hero of Corn here, all of which are going to charge Meow Ying while, the, uh, while she's kept in place um, by Kuhar. All of them, of course, have faced off against Miao Ying before, so they uh, know that they can pull it off. The last time we did distract her for the uh, duration... Or wait, or did we distract Jiao Ming? We distracted one of the dragons for the duration of the battle with the Chaos Spawn summoning, but I don't think that'll be needed here as we have the uh, Halberds and, and both Lord and Hero to deal with that dragon. Anyway, since this is Miao Ying's last battle, let's uh, do a little bit more focus on her and her pretty glorious dragon form animations as she falls. I hope they add the Fire Dragon next. I have a bad feeling they're gonna add the uh, the sea dragon instead, but we'll see. We'll see, but anyway. Uh, keep on going. How's Meow Ying looking? Pretty bad, I hope. Yes, so down to about 20% of her HP. And should fall shortly, or at the very least should rout while we chase her down. Another unit of Jade Lancers has once again foolishly decided to try to charge our Chaos Warriors of Corn with Dual Axes, which are going to rip them apart and the Jade Warriors apart with absolutely no problem. In fact, both of them will run from the uh, Chaos Warriors of Corn who will run them down, but also get into combat with some Jade Crossbows. Over in the back lines, our damaged units are wreaking havoc among the Jade Warrior Crossbows, who can't really stand up to the Flesh Hounds, and these three units have routed, uh, which will enable at the very least the Marauders to charge some of the enemy units in the back, while the rest continue to work. Uh, the Jade Warriors and Jade Lancers alike have pretty much been destroyed over on the rightmost flank, and the Skull Cannons once again providing being, rather, uh, quite useful in providing fire support for this unit of marauders. I missed the actual setup because we were watching Miao Ying's last fight here, um, but uh, what we what he essentially did is reposition the cannons to fire perpendicular or parallel, I guess, uh, to the uh, to the enemy units, which were blobbed up fighting this unit of marauders. So and it's quite nice because you can reposition them and they fire quite effectively against pretty much anything that they fire at. Anyway. Uh, Still a few uh, units to destroy some peasant archers over here. Although they do face off against, once again, flesh cans, and if the Jade Warriors had no chance against them, I don't imagine that the peasants will fare any better. And here comes some trolls to freak the giants out. Nice kick. Wow, that guy went flying from that troll kick. And looks like he will get back up, but by the time he's up, his unit will have routed. Now, right, another uh, face-off of Chaos Warriors of Corn with Dual Axes versus Jade Warriors. Or Jade Crossbows here. And it looks like they're gonna book it on out of there as well. In fact, the entire enemy army is in horrible shape. There's a couple more units fighting out here, I believe. We've managed to run down Meow Ying, but I didn't want to waste the time because it took a while to keep her on screen. Uh, the summoned Chaos Spawn have been summoned over here where our one unit of Marauders has been holding back two units of Jade Warrior Halberdiers and thus the uh, most difficult portion of the campaign. And here we send a few of our own Halberdiers in the form of the Coronates in to help out. And good job to this particular unit of Marauders, definitely an MVP for this battle for holding off these two for the entire battle without any help and got heavily damaged for their trouble, but that's just fine. Anyway, with that, I do believe the battle is ours. Uh, looks like... Oh, Kukar has found Lord Magistrate. Okay. All right, still have to kill this guy. And oh, we have uh, Kukar's minion lord as well. I wonder if we should keep him on foot or not. I mean, it is nice to be able to reposition quickly, and... Oh, these two look good, uh, with uh, one being on foot and one not, but uh, it is nice to be able to reposition quickly and get into combat and chase enemy lords and heroes down, especially things like mages, uh, when they're on mounts. You gotta be able to chase them down. Or else they'll just keep casting. And I don't think the Coronates will appreciate it very much. Anyway, the Magistrate is bouncing between our two Lord and Heroes. 
And it looks like a couple more kits will bring him down and end the battle for us. In fact, I do believe in the meantime, and the entire enemy army has shattered. This guy was the only melee unit left on the field, and it's just the flyers. Alright, come on, I want to see that death animation. One more swing, who's gonna get the kill? We didn't get to see Meow Ying's Oh man, they both swung at the same time. How am I supposed to credit the kill there? <laughs> Watch them just start attacking each other as they fight over the skull. Anyway, battle is done. We're going to do plenty of chasing here because we want the garrison to be destroyed and try to knock out a few of those Sky Lanterns with the remaining ammunition to the Marauder horses. Uh, good luck to you. All right, very nice. Pretty much everything with the exception of the aerial units destroyed. Meow Ying ripped apart by the combination of our uh, hero a lord and uh, the blood angels. We saved those halberds for her dragon form, and it looks like that worked out fairly well. As for who stood out, 179 kills on the cornflakes, uh, 118... 118, 148, and 141 on the corn dogs, Karanax puppies, and Kuhar's good boys, and of course the the, the, the cannon continues to be uh, ridiculously good. I, you know what, I'm gonna give that cannon the name. You guys have given me just an absolutely obnoxious number of names for the uh, uh, counter offer. You're not vassalizing, okay, bud? Uh, obnoxious number of. Okay, that we, we were expecting. Deathmaster Snitch returns quick, but not to worry. We'll have armies... Whoa! Oh, it was mostly Skaven slaves. I was like, why did uh, why did that uh, army get so badly hurt doing that? Uh, Sigvald, no, I'd love to trade with you, man, but you've got to be confederated first. Then we can not trade with you anyway, so you'll never be traded with. And, ah... Uh, that's not great. The Dangerous Winds, Miscast Chance, and Research Rate Reduction. This will probably force us to... Eh, now still two turns, okay. I was worried that we'd lose a turn on that. Uh, Hivold Painbringer, you've unlocked some Chaos stuff. Uh, Settlement looted Taitsu and lost, but that's why we didn't upgrade it, and that was one of the ones we were gonna trade. Anyway, and oh! What the heck is this? Were they always here? Or did they just move here, right beside Kolek? Because reasons. <laughs> Interesting. And Zhao Ming is around with the full stack as well. It's nice that he's at Shi Long rather than uh, uh, rather than moving up here. I also note we can see Drajuath's army, which could potentially be a cause for concern. Hmm. And then we'll see. First of all, the Skull Cannon. I have, like, uh, more than half a dozen names for these things. I will get an army with a bunch of Skull Cannons in another place as well. I do want to make a very artillery-focused army with Hell Cannons and Skull Cannons, and but elsewhere. For now... And possibly some Chaos Dwarven artillery in there as well. Uh, for now, you shall be the Blood ba Battery. Very nice. And we'll get at least one more Skull Cannon in this army, I think. Possibly a couple more, depending on if we can get them from our uh, Cornate ally. Anyway, you have Savage Bloodlust, so you can get Fight or Die now. Very nice. And then we'll move through Unflinching Soldiers. You have started leveling. Let's get you Magicka's Weakness for that campaign movement range. Not entirely sure why that would increase our campaign movement range based on the name, but it's fine. I'd resolve that, and... Ah, uh, it's always so tempting to subjugate the Cathians, but no, no, we gotta occupy. And Crown of Ever... Hello. A healing thingy. Crown of Everlasting Conquest. Now, Kolek... You're currently using an Iron Curse Saika? No, 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 no. Crown of Everlasting Conquest. That's a very nice find for you. Now you have Regen. And that will make you scarier. Much, much scarier. Uh, very nice. And, ooh, we got pottery here. That's nice. Cultist Camp immediately gives us favor from all buildings plus five faction-wide. Pottery is one of the more valuable ones, or most valuable ones. Possibly the most valuable one. Uh, then... 
will immediately want to go to exploit vassals for that construction cost reduction, but it'll be less than blood and toil, so we'll still want to build this stuff up right now. Raid trophies and... Vassal Emissary may not be super useful here. We have two territories that are adjacent to us. Hmm. I'm inclined to start moving through Champions Arena. Wait, no, not Champions Arena. Through the Thralls thing everywhere, because a tier 4, it gives us tribute to Vass from Vassals. Though, on the other hand, we won't be able to access it until tier 4 anyway, so it's not going to be as valuable at the current time. Hmm. It's still probably use growth for now, then. Yeah, fine. Use growth. And we might still build the vassal thing, depending. Uh, depending on who gets these territories more than anything else. Anyway, uh, let's... You know what? I was about to say let's get moving, but uh, since this is the last turn that we have Blood and Toil available, we should really take advantage of it. Uh, many more favor buildings. They're the ones that matter the most. You are also near to some stuff, but probably the Vassal Emissary isn't going to be crazy useful to you. Uh, Alter of the Crimson Harvest has two nearby f places. Actually, three nearby if we count the Grayling Moot, but it's probably not making much. Frankly, even, even these things aren't making much. Eh. Norskins just don't make much money. Ah, the Monolith of Katam. You can get an upgrade to the next tier. That's nice. Ah, one more. One more turn on Doomkeep. Oh, well. We can find those materials at sea, though. That will be swell. And then go, we just checked. What do we have here? You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. You are fine, you are fine, in the sense that we don't want to spend money on you. And you are fine in the same exact sense. We could upgrade a few of these bone pits, but frankly, I think the money is more valuable to us right now. It's about to drop significantly once we... Uh, uh, once we stop raiding, so we can't forget that. Ah, damn, I already upgraded the strategy chamber to tier 3 here. Because this is the best location for it. Mm, just double check if there's any other decent ones. Surprised how little money you're making despite the ports. I mean, eventually this will be worth a decent amount, so I think we'll upgrade you here. I guess the same thing is true of Varg Camp and the stuff at the Monolith of Catan, but we can't do anything there anyway. Anyway, anyway, time to move, Archie. Hey, you have to get to... Ah! Would you look at that? Drash has arrived to defend Bitter Bay, and fairly quickly, I might add. Rather than... Hmm. Alright, well, go into raiding stance right beside Vanola. This will give us a little bit more cash over the end turn, and then we'll have a nice battle for Archeon. In fact, while we're at it, I'd like... Oh. Damn. I was gonna generate a new... Knight troop, but alas, we don't have one available. At least not here. Should have gotten one from the dark hole, but oh well, what can you do? Don't collect the income here because it is just gonna rebel anyway. And minus two now. Not as bad. Azazel, you're moving out, sir. And you are moving out to probably Blood Mountain. Away you go. Sack value is basically nothing. On a resolve that, it's going to kill one of the Sibylan Slaughter Cave. No, it didn't. But it did kill lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of our marauders. And we will occupy. And we'll probably gift, well, not this place to Vassal, the nearby stuff to the crag. Alright, Blood Mountain, you should be reasonably safe, so I'm happy building this here with the use of blood and toil. Just gotta make sure that Sigvald doesn't retake it. And then... While we're here, Gulatur, you're gonna move into the Cliff of Beasts, which is actually fairly decently defended, and might be worth a fight. Let's see what we're looking at here. Close victory, medium casualties. Yeah, this will absolutely wreck our uh, our spawn. Actually, speaking of spawn, I wanted a fourth spawn. And one, two, three, four... Eh. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? You, Forsaken. E you... Spy, you have to be level 4. You spawn. I like so. Otherwise, we don't have enough Forsaken and spawn, which is what this army is built around, so yeah. Especially since in his current form, Violent Chanter gives us perfect vigor for Forsaken and buffs Forsaken, spawn, and Chaos Feral Manticores. It's all the types of units in this army that Gilator buffs, so damn well he should. And now, I guess we can debut his Chaos War Shrine form, which would be nice. Uh, before we do, though, we'll need to get Monstrous Strength. At no. Uh... Monstrous Strength? Oh, it is here, okay. The Spawn of Nurgle. 
Could have sworn it was called Freakish Mutations. Oh, Freakish Mutations is the higher level version of it. Alright, alright, fair enough. Uh, yeah, let's get this. I do like the... Wait, no. Uh, Monster Strength. That's a little bit of bonus melee attack, though, frankly. Hmm, Malefic Sorcerer, level 16, gives us Locus of Virulence and Seal of Sickness. Nergal Leadership and... Casualty. You know what? We're gonna save the points because we'll level up and then we'll be able to get all three of these. Even if it will make this fight easier. But there's some good stuff there. So you know what? No, I'm not going to level you up right now. Hey, you, sir, don't get the additional movement rate like the Coronates do, but you do get Retinue Physician, which we're still going through, too. Uh, let's go for... Do we care about the leadership? In this army, we don't, because we have no demons that can melt. So we'll go Retinue Bard instead, and then we'll go Retinue Physician. And go towards time to fight. Caliph of Beasts, more Dark Elves to slay. I think you've grown pretty darn good at it. And I think you will continue at it quite well. Go. I love you, Gullator. I love you and your unnecessarily long speeches. It's perfection. It's absolute perfection. Anyway, as usual, we send in the Frolicking and Bubonikers in by themselves and cast Curse of the Leper upon them so that the Bleak Swords are ripped themselves apart. And due to that damage reflection, the Frolickers are still going to get hurt, but by the time they can retreat, the rest of our army will be here. Now, we're not facing off against anything crazy, so our uh, various piles of Forsaken, especially with their perfect vigor shouldn't have any trouble ripping everything apart though we do have to be wary of the two units of shades and the black guard of nagarond if nothing else because of all their armor piercing and general heavy damage dealing and i guess to some degree the artillery piece but our uh, our feral manticores or our doggos should be able to take care of that Alrighty, there was a rename suggested for uh, Gulator, which was, which I enjoyed, it, it was the Plague Poet. I don't know if I'm going to keep him as the half-spawn or rename him as the Plague Poet there, but he can be known for as two names, because he's certainly going to be uh, kept around as a legendary character on uh, this channel after all this. And I like the idea of, well, this uh, speaking to all those crazy speeches he constantly makes. In my head can an explanation for this this would be something along the lines of, uh, since he's half spawn and constantly at risk of turning into spawn while rotting, etc, etc, as I, uh, as I decided earlier, uh, he tries essentially to keep his mind sharp and constantly waxes poetic about everything, and uh, maybe recites some uh, chaotic poetry uh, during the battle, in addition to all those speeches, which I do like the idea of. See, this is what it's all about, building these legendary characters as a community. It's uh, uh, definitely one of the best parts of these uh, these campaigns, for me anyway. Anyway, anyway, back to the actual battle. You got the Black Guard of Nagarond completely surrounded by Forsaken and by Spawn from various sides, but of course uh, they are the uh, most threatening unit on the field and they will certainly uh, dish out some damage, poison or not. Uh, we do have the enemy army activating its uh, murderous prowess, though a little a little bit too late as the backline has already been completely overrun and by the manticores and doggos and even some of the forsaken and spawn have broken through. Bounce of powers are about 90 percent. I believe the enemy lord a death hag has been killed by the exalted hero and by one of the manticores in the meantime and now it's just a matter of running down the rest of the units before they can make any use of that murderous prowess. There we go. Too little and too late. It is the unfortunate 
that uh, aspect of that particular ability if you don't use that uh, slave sacrifice ability and it does have a tendency to activate either when you've already won or when you've already lost um, but uh, yeah anyway a good job Gulator nice little debut on your war shrine looking pretty good up there who knows the degree to which your legs still work uh, in your current form and I'm still thinking we'll probably keep him on the shrine because uh, this way he does buff the army and sort of uh, commands from up there it ain't bad all right very nice very nice minimal damage in fact i think Nearly half the damage was on one unit of Forsaken, and it was the one that was uh, dueling the uh, Black Guard of Nagarond. I probably should have diverted one of the uh, units of Chaos Spawn towards it, or you know, rather than allowing the Forsaken to fight alone, or probably maybe cast a, uh, a spell or two to reinforce that unit. Maybe the Curse of the Leper on them instead of the uh, uh, instead of the Frolicking Bubonicers, who probably will be taken out of this army shortly. Anyway, we're gonna occupy the place. Not gift it to Vessel. Come on, keep the tusks. Nah. Damn. And we still have blood and toil, so we can build this up immediately. All right, a Dragon Maiden gem, which is useless to us. We are coming upon Black Rock here, which is another dark fortress, and by the looks of it, are reasonably well defended. Hey, you, sir. Minus 48, eh? It's not looking good for you, bud. Gulator might have to, uh, well, obliterate you. Uh, you, Hudukai, you're supposed to join Azazel. And, you know, while Azazel, while I have you... Uh, let us see... Man, I want to name another one of these units. Uh, Marauders of Sonish with Hell Scourges. You can be Thunder Freaks. Ah, the Rex. There you go. And so got to replace that Chaos Spawn as well. Though I suppose we could just turn some of these guys to uh, Forsaken and Spawn if we want them. But I'm disinclined to necessarily have them in this army. i got to think about it. Hmm. We could put uh, Spawn into uh, uh, into Sigvald's army just to annoy him, if nothing else. And just the thought, though. Anyway, uh, you two will be chariots. What level do you need to be to become chariots? Level four. Ah, it's actually not so bad. You should be chariotized relatively soon. All right. And you know what? Since we're going to turn you into chariots anyway, assuming you survive, we can name you immediately. Freaks on a leash. We'll double up on that. Uh, there we go. And we should start naming those dragon ogres as well. I only got one name for them so far. You. Or wait, or do I have another? I can't, well, whatever. Uh, the thunderous host. All right, Summoners of Rage and Thunderous Host just to start off. And we'll do more names after. For now, I want to get to that big old fight with uh, with Archeon. Kolek, I need to kill off these raddies, though I fear that if we attack them like this, they will move this way and it'll be too far from us. What will happen if we go here and attack you this way? Let's find out. Where are you going to go? You're going to go here. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now you're going to draw the other army into your fight. Although, we won't be able to chase it down if we take the Bridge of Heaven and we'll be in the zone of control. No, we won't be in the zone of control of the Bridge of Heaven. It has no zone of control because it lost its units. Oh, well, that's good for Kolek. Kolek? Uh, hmm. Zhao Meng is near you, so we might have to fight this to avoid casualties, but it's garbage. It's all garbage. Hmm... It's casualties low. I'm gonna risk it. And and you know what, in fact, if this forces Jiao Ming to attack us, they may not necessarily be the worst thing. Ah, oh, yeah, that barely did anything. Uh, I was about to say, may not necessarily be the worst thing in the world. Sacrifice. More money, more souls. And one last turn of blood and toil. All right, and we can't reach this guy. Oh, hopefully he doesn't run around to grab one of these places. Uh, just by himself. Take the Bridge of Heaven and occupy it for now. Temporary. Oh, actually, not temporarily, because we want to keep those for... Oh, now it's a port. 
I would have loved to have those furs, but alas, we can't have those. But at least we get the pastures here, which is going to be helpful for our warhounds and our manticores. Anyway, let's continue for the time that we have left. And I still don't like you. Hmm. If only Eldritch Aura wasn't really good, and then I wouldn't consider really deleting you. Do I have any other capacity for you guys? Yeah, we do have another. You know what? Slaughterer Strength, that's good for Assassins. Let's do Iron Skin. That once again doesn't really matter. Plus, the Exalted Heroes are actually reasonably cheap to recruit. So it's not so bad. Let's pop you immediately. <laughs> Another Gulator. Gulator got so famous, they're all naming their kids after him. And how oh, you start with Eldritchora. Let's see what you end up with. Blight Swarm, Eldritchora, and Vigor Loss Reduction for, sp for Chosen. That doesn't do much for us, but the Eldritchora again... And the Blight Swarm, I think we'll take you. Open Dyes isn't super useful for you, though. In fact, funnily enough, Open Dyes, well, it'll make you level faster. Hmm. You have Unearthly Reflexes, which gives you speed and melee defense. I mean, honestly, that makes me think they're roughly equivalent. Although, if we were to, for example, put you into, for example... Festus's army, who will probably have chosen of Nurgle. Or, wait, a moment. We could put you into Archeon's army, couldn't we? He'll have three chosen, so this would apply to them. Although I think he already has this trait. Now, you're not bad as long as we actually put you to somebody who has chosen, which uh, Kolek will not. But somebody down here will. And I'm still on the fence about you, but anyway. Uh, let's end the turn now. Unless there's diplomacy to do. Puppets of Misrule. Getting close to wanting to be our vassal, but that's not quite what we want. Uh, Malice, minus 153. Now it looks like he'd be willing to die. And you, sir, Eshin. Well, we haven't damaged Eshin enough for that to work yet. I see Clan Moors is around, in fact, want to trade. I mean, it'll probably be a while until we declare war on them. Though I imagine the Drash doesn't like them very much. This could give us a decent amount of cash and be worth our time. Oh, and the Blessed Dread want to trade as well, funnily enough. But we'd have to subjugate them. Uh, let's do all this. This gives us... Oh, not even worth it. Let's do this. 3.6k. Let's just do the trade agreement for now. We might get these later from him. Oh, wait. Uh, wait. 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 Oh, the pacts prevent us from mm, doing the vassalage. A moment. Join war against all of these guys. 23. Yeah, not quite there. Damn. And we can't trade any settlements. We could trade them Darkhold, which is worthless to the minus two. Oh, it's in fact negative. Damn. Hmm. Well, I think we still do the trade agreement for now, but Clan Moors. If we could just vassalize you, that would be swell, as in without bothering to fight you. For now, give us the money and give us the trade agreement. Maybe the vassalage will increase or the opportunity will increase as we get stronger, potentially, and they get weaker, etc, etc. Anyway, Archeon, I'd like you to take on Drash. Hopefully he doesn't run, as that would be disappointing. Right, he's got solid defenses at Bitter Bay, a full army. This army's probably moving in as well. Damage, damage, damage in turn. We just gotta make sure that... Did he just move? He just moved, didn't he? Uh, what is this? Go away. Oh, that was the last army belonging to uh, Meow Ying. Uh, Clan Moors, you want that military access? No, not right now. Where did Drash go? I have a feeling he went after Clan Moors. But yeah, we just gotta make sure that we don't let Imrik take out uh, Pig Barter, as that would be really unfortunate. And he has an army hanging around. Probably that one is too weak to take on Pig Barter, though. You go to Bitter Bay, unless we can sight Dredge, which right now we cannot. Yeah, he ran. You little coward, Dredge. I was looking forward to this. Occupy. All right, Northern Province is destroyed. Hey, a Lichbone Pennant, nice pickup. Uh, Bitter Bay, we can uncollect the income and hold on to for now. I guess we'll... I was about to say sail out, but Drash is around here. I have a feeling he's going for Bone Gulch. 
I mean, what's the likelihood he's going for Nagash's or a Desolation of Nagash? Can't see him, which is the issue. Hmm. I'm just looking around to see whether there's anything that could potentially allow us to see, but uh, alas, and it doesn't appear to be the case. Anyway, Azazel, you can reach the Palace of Princes for a quick little load of resolve there. I see Siggy's nearby. Unlikely that he'd attack us. And close victory, eh? Hmm. Might be worth a fight. This is Azazel's army after all. We haven't seen the uh, various... Uh, uh, we haven't seen the various whipping units do too much as yet. I don't want to summon anything there. Alright, you stay there for now. We'll see if there's any other potential battles. Gulator. You cannot reach Blackrock this turn, but you will be able to also not reach the Blighted Grove. Well, damn. Alright, I think we get back to Blighted Grove after taking Blackrock first, as it is obviously more critical. And yeah, I figured if they were going to revive, they'd revive here. So it'll have very solid defenses and might actually be an army or a battle worthy of Gulator's attention. Nice. Kolek. I see... Ah! Zhao Ming, you're still here. Well, well, well. And this will be a battle worthy of Colex. Watch out for all those Skaven jumping around them. Ah, uh, Pyrrhic Victory. You so say, yeah, two near, basically two full stacks led by Jia Ming. I like it. I like it very much. Uh, we could get a couple more Marauders or a couple more Doggos. I think we'll go Marauder, Doggo, Doggo. The thing is, we'll need units to chase stuff down while we fight. And there's nothing else that we can get here, really. All right, this one I'm happy about, but we must level before we go. Uh, Hearts of Iron could be very well useful. Uh, we could start moving through monstrous strength in order to buff the Dragon Ogres, though only a single level ain't that much. Giant Killer buffs Kolek himself, this buffs Kolek himself. Yeah, I think we'll take the Vigor. All right. I guess it's another day of uh, Dragon Slaying today. Away we go. Alrighty, here we go. Kolek's speech is short as Gulator's is a log. Did he just say yes? Is that what he said? <laughs> Well, yes indeed, sir. We have a great battle ahead of us. Two full stacks for Kolek to face off against, plus a Zhao Ming. Plus, I didn't even realize that this was a minor settlement battle, so we still have the towers uh, to contend with and the inability to run around the enemy's flanks. It's gonna be a toughie, and uh, we'll see if we can pull it off. As obvious or as usual, Kolek will lead the charge forward and get focused down by all the range that the enemy can, but he's pretty darn resilient resistant to it between 28 ward and 40% missile and another 25% physical resistance. Not quite immune to it perhaps, uh, but uh, taking very little damage to those volleys. On top of the fact that now that he has regeneration due to that crown of everlasting glory, which I'm pretty sure we're going to keep on him, uh, he can take all the damage and potentially recover. Now in terms of deployment, we have our units of the Chaos Trolls, the Armored Chaos Trolls, leading the charge together with the uh, Summoners of Rage. I would normally allow the Summoners of Rage to be in the back a little bit, but they need to be able to activate their Chain Lightning as fast as possible. Uh, they will be followed by the various Marauders, and then we have our six units of other regular Dragon Ogres, three to charge up the ramp following the main force and the Armored Chaos Trolls, and then the other three are going to be deployed here, uh, but uh, this causes the enemy to not deploy around this position, which means will send these three looping around up this ramp together with all four units of doggos and hopefully hit these guys and whatever remains uh, around this choke point. Anyway, that's enough about the setup. Let's get to the actual battle proper. Kolik is laying into a pile of uh, jade lancers. Should be pretty darn effective at it and kill a few of them off at least with every swing of that big old maw. 
Alright, and here comes a little bit of lightning to follow him up, activating his ability to knock out both uh, Jade Warriors and Lancers. I like it almost looks like the lightning was hitting that tree there. Alright, and the Summoners of Rage and the uh, Chaos Trolls, Armored Chaos Trolls, have led the charge, allowing us a space around the ramp and allowing our units of Marauders to go in. A Dragon's Breath coming in from Zhao Ming, who has moved in and transformed in order to face off against Kolek. But I gotta give the advantage to Kolek here especially with a few of those units of anti-large dragon ogres nearby, while the main force of the enemy is held off and by the armored chaos trolls and those poisonous uh, marauders of Nurgle to help out. Alright, there we go. Seeing a lot of the uh, ca armored chaos trolls fight, but they're such a great unit, so... I don't mind. Plus, once again, I love all the craziness going on with the little, uh, I don't know, little spiky contraptions they've got on their back, and the trophy racks that they've got on their backs. Anyway, let's see how the army has split. We are, we have established a beachhead to some degree, but haven't quite made it past the choke point, though over on this side, and uh, that other unit of dragon ogres and the doggos have finally moved in and are getting ready to charge. Alrighty, and a unit of... Not Yari Ashigaru, but uh, Peasant Long Spears, uh, trying to hold us up. And the Doggos will help out killing them. They're not super threatening in terms of their damage, and the Doggos should be able to attack a lot of them uh, at once due to the sheer number of models of uh, relatively small non plague Doggos. And just help the uh, Dragon Ogres work their way through them faster, because we want to hit the, the units that are behind them. The Jade Warrior crossbows here, more Jade Warrior, no, more Peasant Archers, and even a unit of Crane Gunners. In the meantime, oh wow, Kolek is absolutely obliterated in Zhao Ming, and Zhao Ming looks like he can't run. Another swing or two, and the big old dragon will go down once again. Maybe you should have spent a little more time... Uh, a little bit more time training how to fight in dragon form instead of snorting warpstone, buddy. Alright. Not enough warpstone in the world to save you from Kolek. Alright, and here we go. The battle continues with the lure dead. The balance of power, in fact, still only about 55% in our favor, though the beachhead does grow and we are moving further into the enemy settlement. Alright, and every time a melee unit breaks, it just means that we can lay into the range units that they were protecting. A nice little platform allowing some of the units of hand cannons uh, to uh, shoot us down here. Or iron hail gunners, but they're basically hand cannons. Alright, though I do have to wonder how effective these things will be against the Dragon Ogres. They're probably more effective against the Dragon Ogres than against the, uh, than against the Chaos Trolls. At the same time, they're probably also killing off or damaging a decent pile of their own allies. Out here we've uh, gotten to another choke point as the Chaos Trolls and Marauders of Nurgle. Head forth, we're probably going to have to send them a little bit of help here, because that's a lot of units in this one choke point. And in fact, if we still had the chain lightning cast available to us from the summoning of rage, summoners of rage, uh, this would probably have been a pretty darn ideal place to use it. Not to worry though, we are planning to get a chaos sorcerer of metal here, which I think will work out pretty well for such situations. It's really the glittering robe that I want, but the Searing Doom spam is also going to uh, work out quite well with the Dragon Ogres and, once again, potentially the, uh, uh, the Armored Chaos Trolls. Alrighty, we've knocked down that platform and those Iron Hail Gunners are pretty much done for. We'll destroy them and uh, continue our way into the enemy settlement. Kolek leads the charge on the other side. The enemy Crane Gunners are destroyed and the Doggos have arrived with the rest of our Dragon Ogres. Balance of Power looking pretty good now at about 70% in our favor. Although a few units do still remain and a Dragon-Blooded Shugangan has made their way into the fray. I believe that was the reinforcing army outside the settlement. Alrighty, and I lost sight of her. in here somewhere. There we go, casting something by the looks of it. A firewall, perhaps. There it is. Firewall starting up a very, very effective spell against basic units. It's super cheap. 
And yeah, there we go. See, it's going to hit this unit of Chaos Warhounds and they'll lose about half of their HP and just by touching it for a few seconds. I was honestly shocked at how cheap this spell is to cast, considering it's a big area of effect and it goes through a, a big old portion of the map. It is still up, I think. It disappeared under the uh, tower. Yeah, there it is. And it's gonna keep going and it's gonna bounce through some more Marauders. A very nice cast from the enemy Lord, but Kolek has taken revenge. 133 kills and nearly 20,000 damage from a single cast. Alright. I also feel like Kolek should have like a stomping killing animation, not just uh, not just the swings of Star Crusher, but nonetheless. All right. In fact, in fact, speaking of Kolek, he's at 404 kills and 69 nice mm, thousand damage. Not too bad at all. The enemy lord will go down under some uh, lightning and under that mall, and the balance of power creeps further into our favor to about 80 percent this choke point however is still going and the marauders are very heavily damaged although they are only temporary in this army so they hardly matter we're keeping them essentially as a moving larder uh if the dragon ogres get hungry they have the uh, the extra marauders to eat Feels like something an ogre army would do, but hey, we're dragon ogres here, so we'll take a leaf out of their book. Hmm. If we could get an ogre vassal, and pop a few lead belchers in this army, although since Greasus was unlikely, see, the thing is, it needs to be a vassal that's far away from our own territories, or else the uh, chaos corruption will completely screw them over and just cause rebellions all over their provinces. Anyway, the battle is pretty much done. I think this choke point is the last place and that it needs to go. Our doggos are working over in the background trying to chase off the uh, the enemy runners, but it looks like the last of the enemies are done for. Ah, look, there is a magistrate runner. No, it's an astromancer still running around and we'll have the uh, summoners of rage chase him down and perhaps Kolek as well. Still a few range units up here, though. Okay, there we go. We gotta get into combat. I'm actually surprised that the enemy army hasn't routed at this point, considering it's only a pile of uh, it's only a pile of crossbows still remaining. I guess that uh, Astromancer still uh, hasn't routed, even though I'm sure he'll get ripped apart by Kolek in the background shortly. And he's keeping the defenders in place, even though Zhao Ming and the Dragon Blooded Shugengen have both fallen. I do like how these uh, these maps with elevation allow the uh, uh, allow the sky lanterns to sort of hover really close to the ground. That looks pretty neat. Though I'm willing to bet the enemy, well, I was about to say wishes that they were sky junks, but frankly, in this particular battle, it wouldn't have really helped them. Yeah, they would have killed off the marauders a little bit faster, but the sky junks wouldn't have done anything to the dragon ogres, and certainly not to the chaos trolls. And I actually think the sky lanterns might be able to do to do a bit more damage to them. Anyway, there we go, a close victory apparently, and mostly because our marauders got absolutely wrecked, and a couple of our doggos got badly damaged, um, but the dragon ogres and the chaos trolls especially are completely fine All right, there we go. Uh, Draj may have run away like a little coward, but um, um, oh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, Dra or Zhao Ming did fight to the last peasant, as uh, we were able to destroy both armies here, and it was a pretty nice fight at that. Uh, looks like he also got out damaged by the uh, firewall casting. Uh, Dragon blooded Shugengen there. So good job to that lord that we won't be seeing that one again i am still a little bit concerned about the fact that the chaos trolls do seem to be roundly out damaging the uh, units of uh, dragon ogres or at the very least out killing their damage does tend to be close i think at least partly this is hmm let me just see here 731 just look at the gold values here yeah so we do send the drag 
the dragon ogres to kill things like jade lancers because they have anti-large and therefore they tend to rack up less kills to some degree plus they're more fragile so we do tend to back them off a little bit more than the chaos trolls because the chaos trolls with their regen and heavy armor just don't care all right well either way we are going to occupy the plo sack i don't remember how close we were we were at the bridge of heaven so i think we might not be able to move twice and i don't want to risk wasting the turn and just talk about i don't think we had any movement left or though i'm not sure but i'm reasonably sure let's say all right well the bridge of heaven is relatively worthless to us so let's pop into exploit vassals for that extra campaign movement trade and well 130 money is something uh it's not enough to care about then i guess we're moving up this way and yeah we'll need another army how many more territories you have seven huh i'm almost tempted to briefly peace out with Jiao Ming. You know what? Maybe next turn we take Xiamo's rest, we peace out with him, we head northward until the uh, until the Skaven's territories are all ours, and then we redeclare war on Jiao Ming. Yes, it'll give him time to recover, but it'll also enable us to do a few things. Uh, huh. Somebody's destroyed Snake Gate and not recovered it. I don't think it's full of Skaven because it used to be owned by the Warhost of Jar, which means it was probably Village that did it. Interesting. Anyway, you have to get to the Terracotta Graveyard, sir. And I can't quite tell if we can reach it. I think we can, just barely, so. You know what? Well, let's not risk it. Let's go into March Stance and go to the Terracotta Graveyard. We're going to loop down towards the Skaven for a little bit because we have to go to the edge of the territories belonging to Village anyway in order to start... Oh, there he is. Uh, although, if we can catch his army out somewhere here, like if he moves southward, we'll just have Kuhar kill him off. How many territories? Uh, he currently holds five. One is the Red Fortress. I take it one, two, three... Does he hold this place? Yeah, he holds Wei Jin as well, which should be a Dark Fortress as well. So we need to kill him, kill off these territories, loop through the Great Bastion, and then take the Red Fortress out. Because he's, well, I mean, it would actually be trivial to vassalize him, and but we want to confederate, and thus uh, we have to do it the killy way. All right, Azazel. You still have the fight at the Palace of Princes, potentially, though, frankly... I mean, they do have some stuff. We gotta remember that Azazel is still using almost all Marauders. He doesn't have the upgrades for his forces quite yet, and they need to be, what, level 4? 5. And before they get there, so... Yeah, it'll be a little bit. And I think... Ugh, I'm still not sure about these two. We'll just keep moving them. If nothing else, this guy can act as a scout, and I am not 100% sure where to send you because of that chosen thing that you have. And I don't want that to be wasted. Hmm. I mean, we're probably going to Festus, although Festus will probably be a little bit more demon heavy. Hmm. And nonetheless, start moving this way. And we'll see if we can't get a few more of these guys. Anyway, you guys have moved. The only one who's left to move is Azazel, so let's do another real quick fight, though we are rapidly running out of time. Uh, Azazel, you have levels. And just the one level, you have level. And the level shall go into... You already have Serpentine Tail. This gives you Missile Resistance, which you're probably fine without it. Let's get the Speed Bonus for your army. And I guess the Souls as well. Our Souls are in a pretty darn good position, so we can do whatever we want with anybody's uh, level ups. So at least that's nice. Anyway, to the Palace of Princes. Alrighty, well, here we go again with Azazel. We couldn't afford to auto-resolve lest we get attacked um, by the uh, forces of Sigvald, but that's alright. Plus, I'm sure Azazel will enjoy himself, and he'll start off enjoying himself with a nice cast of uh, a lash of Aslanish, and before dropping down upon the enemy, specifically upon that enemy artillery crew, so that they cannot fire into our marauders uh, with hell scourges. 
and our Chaos Warriors as well. Anyway, I want to see the Hell Scourges in action, as we haven't had too much time for them to play as yet. And we will engage the entire enemy army with this big old anvil. That's the purpose of this portion of our army, and uh, just to act as an anvil. And the Chaos Warriors look quite nice. I like the uh, I like the Slaneshi colors on them. It definitely works with the uh, black armor, black and purple classic combination. But anyway, uh, they have engaged the biggest portion of the enemy army, whereas the Marauders of Slanish, the non hell scourges, you see the uh, lack of the uh, whips on these banners, have all been deployed, every single one, over on the right side of the map. So what they're going to do is they're gonna, half of them are going to run around and hit the enemy backline. Since we don't have doggos in this particular army, we'll use the Marauders for the same purpose and then the others are going to hit the back of the units currently fighting the uh, in the various hell scourges and this is a unit of bleak swords and they're absolutely ripping these marauders apart damn that's kind of impressive though to be fair the other the chaos warriors are having a lot less uh, tough time dealing with the bleak swords which does make sense they're only marauders after all though they will be upgraded relatively shortly And should hopefully have no more trouble against the uh, basic forms of the Dark Elves. And hey, it's only fair if we're if they're using the basic units, then we're using plenty of basic units at the current time as well. Alrighty, and finally the Hell Scourges get to their backup as units of Marauders of Slanish move, and I think those guys are actually chasing down a range unit. The bounce power is about 70% in our favor, and the enemy range units have been run down um, by the dogs of Slanish. And there we go. Oh, nice to see the uh, javelins throw being thrown around. For my relatively limited units of Cav, though they will be chariots eventually. And now it's just a matter of bringing down the last of the enemy units. There is a unit of Black Guard of Nagaron, just like Gulator's battle earlier in the episode, and the last units on the field, but we've got the Chaos Spawn and the Zazel, and now our Chaos Sorcerer all moving in to help out. And drop down Azazel, there you go, was waiting to see that uh, drop down animation of his. He does have some very nice attacks, although out of the uh, out of Village Valkia, Azazel, and Festus, I really prefer Valkia's animations as uh, the best. Village has some pretty cool ones too, though. I like his escape animation when he dies and then uh, sort of teleports out. And he has some very nice uh, animations with his uh, staff and magical attacks as well. Alrighty, well, regardless, Azazel's animations are the ones we get to see today, and like I said, they ain't too bad either, but we won't see any more as the last of the enemy army has shattered. Apparently a close victory, as we have taken some damage on several of our units of marauders, but at least we preserve enough so that if Sigvald comes for Azazel, Slaanesha giggle, uh, then, uh, then we'll still be able to fight. All right, very nice, relatively minimal losses, though fairly heavy damage, at least to some of the Hell Scourge's units, or at the very least a Marauder a version of those units. So the uh, Pillarmen and the Princelings of Perfection and did relatively okay. 11k damage on the Freaks on a Leash. Well, uh, those are uh, those were particularly effective this time around. Not much on the Sibylan Slaughter K, but with only a single Chariot and a heavily damaged one right now, uh, it's unlikely to do too much. Uh, we're just going to occupy the place rather than sacking it. A, another trickster shard. Always a very nice pickup and probably something we can put into Archaon's army with all the heroes he currently has and possibly will have. Now, out of curiosity, Siggy, you have five settlements, so a fair amount as well. Uh, we can see the Dark Fortress here at the Silver Tower and the Fortress of the Dam, so two Dark Fortresses immediately, but the others... Yeah, we got the ag hole here, meaning the others are all out here. Hmm, and oh, is this Slaneshi Corruption? This is all Slaneshi Corruption, yeah. Oh, I see Coronate Corruption. Well, that looks like Valkia is still alive, if nothing else. Now, oh, wow, the Great Arena 
is hers. Nagarond itself has not fallen, but it looks like Grond and everything around it is gone. Spite Reach is gone, so Harganeth is broken as well, and also Corn Corruption. Damn, Valkia doing as good as well we should expect her to be doing. Anyway, with that, we're unfortunately out of time once more. Uh, sorry we couldn't get that battle against Drash going, but he'll be confederated relatively shortly, I hope. Really, really hoping uh, Imric doesn't interfere with it, or possibly uh, watch the uh, watch these guys just declare war on them. Watch this come back to bite me, me not uh, me not killing them. But anyway, we'll see that next time. If it happens, it happens. We will continue moving southward with Kukar and possibly northward with Kolek as we try to crush the uh, Clan Ash and Skaven between them so they don't annoy us any further. Though if Village comes around, we'll take him out too and try to confed him ASAP. Gotta get Zincha on the field, otherwise it's, uh, it's starting to get embarrassing for him. Three out of the four gods have been represented for a decent of while now. Anyway, uh, ooh, the Mark of Slanish is available next turn as well, or Gift of Slanish, which will mean a lot more movement range. Oh, that'll be so nice. Anyway, more Archaunt comes, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those uh, likes and comments below, especially the likes as they nearly failed to reach the threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And name those Dragon Ogres, please. And thanks for watching.